and welcome to Future Grind. The technology industry here in my hometown of Pittsburgh has been getting a lot of attention recently, largely because it is a hub of autonomous vehicle technology. Uber is piloting their self-driving cars on the streets here now, and they already made a video taking you behind the wheel of one of these vehicles. But I recently got an update on the progress of Uber's self-driving car program at a Pittsburgh Entrepreneurs Forum event. We're all so looking at the, the kind of day-to-day -day work and the, the things that we're doing all the time, and it, it is fun to have things like this and actually be able to step back a little bit and think about a year ago and thinking about a year ago and let's say just after this, you know, we were on the test track, we were trying to get the car to drive around the block one time. Um, and this was, you know, uh, this huge push just to get this far. And, and then you see kind of this, this progress of really the whole engineering team um, coming together to try to get to um, this original goal of being able to launch here in Pittsburgh and you know, get to this point which we got to last fall where uh, a normal person, not you know, somebody who has a special press pass or anything else, just a normal person you know, picking up their app and requesting a, a ride from A to B, sometimes a self-driving car will come and pick them up. And I think it's, 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 was, that was an incredible journey and incredible like, speed of a uh, team coming together to, to get to that point. Um, and this notion that kind of, you know, from when we started in this, this first office, just this initial group coming over with nothing, uh, 18 months later, we had this fleet of cars that people, you know, the, the first um, time that a uh, person the normal public in, in the United States uh, could, could ride a self-driving car. So that's something we were really proud of, and I think it was really exciting to be doing it here in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, the, I think that um, in this time then, uh, it really kind of uh, shows a lot about the way that I think Uber thinks about um, these problems is that you really want to always have um, your product out working with customers and seeing how people use it. How do they like it? What do they like? What do they not? Some people say, I don't want to get in that self-driving car and I'll take a regular or thank you very much. And that's really interesting. Uh, you know, we get our, our, our driver ratings just like all the other drivers. It's good, it's good for um, And we get all this feedback. So it's really exciting to be putting this technology out um, you know, in the, the hands of the public, even if, of course, right now we have a safety driver, we still have a lot of work to, to do um, ahead of us. But we're able to then get this data back and really iterate and grow. And this is, I think, the other piece, the sort of the, the really important thing is that um, in terms of our journey on Uber is really growth in all of these different dimensions. Certainly, you know, uh, hiring a bunch, we built a new building with a new um, center that's been featured in some magazines. It's a very nice building. You should all come visit down by the river. Um, and um, as well as then along these, these other dimensions, we've um, since, you know, more recently then launched uh, also down in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're growing our fleet, and so we're getting more and more cars. Uh, we're been hiring a lot of people, getting over 500 employees here in, in um, Pittsburgh, and as well as a new test track out on the Mono um, site, and kind of this you know renovating again, 55 acres of brownfields. There's a lot of these these kind of um, things to really be able to do this work, uh, and um, the tech side, the operations side, the employee side, as well as I think getting involved with the public. And this is something I think we we're really looking forward to doing more of, and really kind of uh, you know both like letting people. Um, drive that be in the cars and feel what it's like, uh, as well as I think I think you know as coming forward again a year ago we were we could hardly say anything now we're trying to say more and I think going forward we really want to be really talk much more about you know how is this technology moving uh, what does this mean for people what does it mean for cities what it means for communities uh, working with regulators working with cities all of these things and uh, kind of you know really bringing the the public along on this journey. Uh, to this, this future that we think is really exciting. Also getting national attention is Argo AI, a Pittsburgh-based company with ties to Carnegie Mellon University. Ford recently announced their plans to invest $1 billion into Argo with the goal of getting a fully autonomous vehicle into production by 2021. I also heard from the COO of Argo about the ultimate goal of his company. So, so Argo is trying to automate cars and really help get the self-driving technology out into the world. So take all those billions and billions of miles, trillions and trillions of miles actually driven around the world every year, and think about moving that from a human-operated fleet to something where we, we take that technology into a broader and broader marketplace in, in a bunch of different kind of markets. That's the that core mission uh, that we're after. And Ford Motor Company is part of that, 
uh, was such an, an amazing enabler in their ability to think about scaling uh, the technology and kind of the, as I got to learn some of the advantages in thinking about those OEM uh, partnerships, these classic big companies that actually have been making pretty large bets as just part of their core business and they have to do this many years out in order to, to get manufacturing lines in place and new products and doing that and realizing, wow, there is a discipline uh, that's really neat to define a partnership there and allowing us as a company not to be, we're not trying to create a new car. That's not us. And we're not trying to create a new transportation network. That's not us. It's that core of focusing in and really getting into that focus on, on the self-driving technology itself. That's, the, that's what ARGO is all about. But the fact is, you are dealing with a company that's been doing what they've been doing for 130 years, something like that, 120 years. Uber comes out of nowhere, brand new company, brand new technology. Everyone's out of that mode. I think there's a, maybe a different way of thinking of Ford. After 100 years of being successful incrementally in building cars, what's that like to go from Uber, where you had been working, to working at Argo and, uh, and dealing with an industrial company like that? So it's, it's been pretty amazing to see life from through the eyes of a company that has that, that history, that longevity, the, the brand reputation. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the impact of, of oh, it's high tech and everybody who's used to being plugged into high tech industry and knowing self-driving is going to come again, yeah, this is all real, this is going to happen. But when Ford Motor Company stands up and says, it is going to happen, there's a whole much larger section of the population that suddenly says, wow, this is pretty exciting. Uh, because of their reputation, there's a brand integrity here uh, that has that's had that longevity. On the technology side for them, you know, they've been re-envisioning themselves in many ways. Talk about Ford Motor Company becoming Ford Mobility Company. And, and it literally goes to the top uh, from, from Bill Ford himself, you know, the executive chairman of the board, uh, who is who has been really preaching this? It's pretty neat now, you know, with new eyes looking at, at, at the technology. He's been preaching this really since the 2000s that there was a revolution coming, transformation, and he is remarkably uh, forward-looking, insightful, and honest about the challenges that are there and how you know, we need to work with we need to work with regulators. We need to be working in a community. We need a whole marketplace to emerge. Uh, to really do this to get society there. And so it's, it was interesting, their perspective on, on how they relate to their current customer base, the way they're doing this, and recognizing that it's a change for them, right? And going, okay, it's not just about this individual purchase car anymore, it's about, about mobility, transportation. And so to see that desire and to get a chance to work with them as they work through, well, what does that mean throughout the ranks of the company, to start with that vision and go on. Pretty exciting time. Thank you for watching. Be sure to follow the new Future Grind page on Facebook to stay updated, and we'll see you next time on Future Grind.